Dear colleagues, I would like to welcome all of you, all the participants of our conference, and I would like to thank the organizers for an opportunity to be one of the speakers within the session uh, in a group of, uh, uh, of two uh, R&D institutions in Siberia. So we decided to change the uh, title of our talk in order to um, invite more people to the um, fr from the audience. So it is set it is set a keratin positive uh, tumors uh, from so urine like uh, peculiar features of morphology, immune phenotype, and prognosis. Next slide, please. So these are the uh, goals of our uh, talk, uh, to demonstrate two clinical cases uh, with some particular subtypes of Ewing sarcoma, which are associated with some morphology and uh, uh, biophenotypes. So the first case, a young patient of 18 years of age uh, has come with pain and uh, restricted motion in the area of the knee. And uh, then later on, uh, there is a symptom uh, such symptom as edema, a soft tissue edema, and uh, when we analyzed the case, we understood that pain was first detected uh, when he was a child, and uh, it was not very uh, bad, and it uh, relieved, uh, self-relieved. And uh, in autumn uh, 2019, it intensified, and uh, he turned to his local clinic. Uh, there was a conservative treatment, anti-inflammatory, and uh, it was not effective. In uh, radio diagnostics, in February 2021, we detected destruction in the uh, distal epiphysis of the right femoral bone. Uh, biopsy was performed, uh, and uh, uh, we uh, understood that it was a malignan malignancy. There was histological. Uh, 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 the, the histology was performed and uh, Ewing sarcoma was uh, identified. Subsequently, uh, the, according to the morphological variant, uh, they um, started no adjuvant uh, chemotherapy. When it comes to the radio uh, situation, radio imaging by MRI, MSCT, excuse me, uh, which was performed in April 2021. You can see that in the medial uh, metadiaphysis of the right femoral bone, we can see a wide zone of uh, mixed destruction, lytic areas which are um, small and they're surrounded with sclerotic areas, chaotic without any clearly delineated markers or borders. Uh, immediately and in the posterior counter, you can see soft tissue component, and also there is a periostal reaction, as uh, such as a periostosis. And uh, first and foremost, they say that this is osteosarcoma. In morphological, the morphology sees, uh, shows polymorphic cells with cytoplasm and uh, some nucleus, the cells show nest-like eyelets or uh, just structures in, within the massive uh, desmoplastic stroma. The structure also shows in the periphery uh, uh, formation of uh, cluster, cell clusters. In some structures, you can see microfocus uh, foci. In IHC, you can see specific markers as positive. This is CD99, FLI1, and also a positive diffuse intensive expression of keratin AE1, AE3. Very weak reaction with epithelial membrane antigen, then uh, uh, reaction for ki 67 In molecular genetic analysis, we detect a specific translocation with, uh, uh, so the diagnostic conclusion was Ewing sarcoma, our right uh, femoral bone, G3. 
uh, uh, endometinoma-like variant of Ewing sarcoma includes quite typical morphology, uh, such as basaloid architecture, and uh, also the cells of basaloid type uh, with the um, peripheral structures uh, as ne nesting in, in the periphery, desmoplastic stroma, also obligate expression of um, epithelial mucus, acetokeratins, and uh, EMA. And clinically, this variant is uh, different from other subtypes of the family, of the Ewing family, as more aggressive uh, development and less um, um, favorable prognosis. Second case. So the second case uh, is uh, patient 52 years of age. She is female. She has also come with uh, pain and uh, um, mass in the left calf. Um, her history shows that in May 2019, there was an edema that appeared in the left uh, third of the calf, uh, which also accompanied with pain. They started anti-inflammatory treatment, and also then antibiotics were initiated, and some clinical improvement was achieved. But in October 2019, there is a, a, a relapse with a more intense pain. They uh, performed uh, complex imaging, and they detected destruction at the level of uh, uh, destruction of the bone with the extra osteal component. They also performed biopsy in uh, April 2020. The result is diff diagnosis, including neuroendocrine carcinoma, grade 3, metastatic genesis, as well as adenocarcinoma and osteosarcoma. Uh, we um, developed the following treatment uh, plan. The first stage is uh, wide segment resection of 3D uh, with 3D reconstruction, then in the, with individual titanic implant, uh, which is which was um, uh, which was done with the technology of 3D printing. Uh, then uh, systemic uh, systemic treatment uh, when we verify the diagnosis, the patient already started adjuvant chemotherapy, and I should say that here. We have we also bumped into COVID-19 problems because she was uh, down with COVID-19, and it was actually a hinder to chemotherapy initiation. And in September 2020, the patient also has absence of separate lesions in the lungs. At the moment, the patient is on chemotherapy, and we are planning to perform surgical uh, the surgical stage uh, when uh, the situation stabilizes. So coming back to imaging, let's analyze MSCT data. We can see here quite wide, prolonged destruction of the aphysis of the in the uh, tibial bone, which is accompanied with the uh, cortical uh, plate uh, thickening with uneven counters, both in, inside and outside, and also with the formation of extra cell component, the size of which can be estimated on MRI. The soft tissue component is surrounded by the circular, just like a cuff, uh, it circles the bone. Uh, grows into the vascular nervous bundle and uh, fatty tissue in the anterior plane. Uh, so the, uh, it is uh, over 55 millimeters long along the osteal component, and also this uh, structure is uneven, heterogeneous with some necrotic inclusions. And what is also very important for the surgical uh, strategy planning is uh, that we estimated the uh, length of the proximal segment from the tumor and it accounted for 48 centimeters. So this uh, millimeters, excuse me, this is the uh, from cortical plate uh, to the uh, uh, upper margin of the tumor. So then this um, imaging also um, ended with osteosintigraphy in April 2020. You can see a scan and the absence of any other lesions. Uh, so you can see quite a long uh, lesion in uh, the uh, bone. In uh, macroscopic um, 
uh, testing, you can see uh, destruction of the bone of uh, five centimeters, uh, circular periosteal uh, growth with the uh, involvement of uh, adjacent soft tissue component. Now you can see that the histology looks completely different. The cells and especially the uh, pattern, uh, chromatin pattern in the nuclei is quite typical for Ewing sarcoma uh, cell uh, pattern. Uh, with uh, uh, almost un 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 unseen uh, cytoplasm, but also you can see in the tumor cells a significant trend towards the formation of sockets, the so-called socket formation. These are true sockets and pseudo, like uh, Benstein, also vascular rockets, and uh, in almost every uh, view you can see them, pseudo sockets, pseudovascular. So in uh, IHC, also you can see portal expression of uh, all tumor-specific markers such as CD99 as a nuclear um, expression of FLY1. Also there is an expression of the so-called neural markers uh, uh, like a reaction to NSC, uh, also a particular um, expression of uh, synapses in and the expression of AU1, AU3. In, uh, it's insignificant, but still there is clear reaction, uh, quite expressed proliferative uh, in the uh, indices. Uh, and in molecular genetic analysis, you can see a specific translocation. Uh, diagnostic conclusion is uh, Ewing sarcoma, peripheral uh, PNET in the um, uh, tibial bone G3. So uh, peripheral PNET uh, is, has typical architecture. First of all, this is formation of uh, pseudo and true sockets, as well as the immunophenotype, uh, the typical expression of uh, neural markers. And, uh, and in certain cases, it's epithelial markers as well. And the prognosis, just like an uh, amantinoma like uh, Ewing, quite aggressive clinical uh, development with unfavorable prognosis. And uh, the five year survival accounts only for 30%. Most important is that the uh, criteria of uh, the so-called neurality, according to the uh, con uh, concept of uh, Hipterer Schmidt from Germany, morphology of uh, sockets and pseudo sockets with a ratio of one to five, uh, so much, many more pseudo sockets, immunophenotype expression is two and over neural markers. CD57, S100, and C, and F, and uh, Sinoptophysin. Uh, uh, so for, in our case, we had two positive. Uh, if you look at the overall um, family of uh, Ewing sarcomas, according to the uh, Pinto classification, they uh, unify eight subtypes, classical or typical variant, and atypical or uh, large cell, uh, peripheral PNAT, uh, uh, amantinoma-like variant, spindle cell. Uh, so the um, incidence According to uh, Polte and Lombard Bosch, uh, classical uh, Ewing sarcoma uh, is 70%, uh, uh, then PNET uh, 14, and all the others are, um, all the other six subtypes are uh, from 2 to 5%. Uh, so in our case, it's a peripheral PNET and endometinoma like variant, which accounts for 5%. So I should say that the expression of epithelial markers, such as uh, uh, keratines, uh, uh, definitely it can be uh, shown in two uh, variants. This is a, a, a dementinoma-like variant and spindle cell uh, sarcoma-like uh, variant, as well as the peripheral peanut. Uh, so in conclusion, I would like to say that the cases uh, shown uh, reflect two important clinical subtypes. These are the pro-epithelial Im immune phenotype of these subtypes, as well as the uh, significant unfavorable prognosis at the background of other type uh, sarco uh, Ewing sarcoma um, family tumors. Thank you.